<laughs> That's great. Zhao Shan Hao, Xiao Wu Hao, Wan Shan Hao. But yeah, all right, another special China Weekly report. Uh, again, for those of you who are just jumping on, I'm not doing the typical weekly edition. This week I'm going to do uh, maybe three or four special reports. But um, two hot topics. Well, one hot topic, but from a different perspective. Uh, Libya. Libya, 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 Libya. Uh, a lot of my vids, uh, as of late, have been looking at uh, the U.S.'s role, uh, Western Europe's role, and the U.N.'s role in Libya, but some potentially unsettling evidence has been uncovered as to uh, China's role in Libya. And, and keep in mind, CNN, the American news media, is no different than the state-run Xinhua news agency or CCTV or the China Daily. Everybody tries to put a spin on the information, on the truth. It's their truth. Sure, there's a truth underneath it all, but the truth they present is a distorted truth designed to shape public opinion and disposition. It's that simple. But anyway, story coming out of CNN, and uh, uh, we're going to look at this from two perspectives. The CNN American perspective and the Xinhua Chinese perspective. Uh, so, China denies report title of the article says it did not sell weapons to Libya and I'm not going to read much of this article because I want to talk more about the substance of the article or what's really going on but uh, documents showing that China offered to sell arms to Muammar Gaddafi in the waning days of his rule are the real deal that's a quote a senior member of Libya's transitional government said Monday and keep in mind that this transitional government is A, nothing more than a puppet government, uh, B, it's made up of a great many tribal elements that have competing interests, and I argued in a video prior that the United States, and more appropriately the UN and its whole, are waiting for the strong man to come out. They're encouraging the disarray so they can take advantage of the one that survives the tribal disarray. And uh, by helping that one, he then, or she then, becomes indebted to the West so that we may have our way in Libya with our good old brand of shock therapy, which we love to employ abroad. And at home, I'd add, if those of you think that shock therapy, uh, the shock doctrine, written by Naomi Klein, that kind of methodology in order to increase capital, increase gains, isn't going on here in the States, it is, incrementally. And I'm going to talk about that in a later video. We're going to come back to the subject of tasers once more. Tasers, tasers, tasers. Don't tase me, bro. The comment follows a report by Canada's The Globe and Mail newspaper saying that state-controlled Chinese arms manufacturers were prepared to sell at least 200 million worth of weapons to Gaddafi, which would have violated UN resolutions banning such transactions. Another side note, this pisses me off to no ends. Prior to, prior to even the big blowout where Gaddafi was really cracking down on the people, uh, the French, I believe it was the French, saw the writing on the wall. Or more appropriately, they, they didn't see the writing on the wall. They, they, they wrote on the wall in that uh, the Western Mountain region, uh, west of Tripoli, they were supplying uh, weapons to rebels, which was in violation of a great many um, UN policies. They were doing it long before the conflict boiled over, long before Gaddafi really came down uh, on the citizens of the country. So, yet again, it's this double standard wherein, oh, oh, China might be up to something. Oh, those Chinese, I tell you. But we were in it long, long, long beforehand uh, with a definite goal in mind, and that would be the removal of Gaddafi, the imposition of a shadowed Western rule and the raping of a nation, be it the labor or the natural resources. The Global Mail said one of its reporters found the documents in Arabic and a pile of trash in Tripoli's Bab Akara neighborhood. You know, I can speak Chinese, but Arab, uh, you know, maybe someday I'll try tackling the Arab language. An enclave that was home to some of Gaddafi's most loyal supporters. So again, you got to look at this too, you know, wonder, hmm, yeah, I've talked a lot about journalism in war zones. I think one of the most dangerous concepts ever brought into the journalism world, and this is part of that government media complex, is the embedded journalist. 
the embedded journalist is, is nothing more than smoke and mirrors, and that we're led to believe that they are really seeing what's going on. There's a certain authenticity that's granted to the embedded journalist via uh, the citizens of the nations involved, where we go, wow, they're really rolling up in them tanks, they're really storming into Baghdad or Tripoli or wherever. Um, so therefore, this must be real. This is real war. When in fact, what they display, what they report on, is extremely controlled from the highest echelons of our of our militaries and our governments. So that 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 fake authenticity, it's not good because people really really believe this shit. It's not like the war reporting that went on in Vietnam that was far more authentic, if you ask me. But um, we found several documents that showed us, and this is a quote. Uh, we found several documents that showed us orders, very large orders of arms and ammunition, specifically from China. And now we do know that some of the things that were on the list are here on the ground, and they came in over the last two to six months, said Abdullah, Abdullah Rahman Busin, an NTC uh, spokesman. NTC is the acronym for the National uh, Transitional Council. And uh, Mohammed Saya, a member of the NTC, said Libya's new leaders have seen the documents. They've seen them. This deal is the real deal. And we have seen the official documents. He said it, it was signed by Chinese officials and it was to send guns and artillery to Libya through Algiers to expedite the deal. Uh, China says that it followed the resolutions, the UN Security Council resolutions that banned the export of arms to Gaddafi's government. You know, Chinese companies have not signed any military trade conflicts or contracts with Libya, let alone provided military exports to Libya. Basically, the paper states that the plan was Algiers would transfer uh, uh, in Algiers and South Africa are kind of seen as allied with Libya to some extent, or at least they were in opposition to the UN Security Councils that endorsed uh, military operations by uh, NATO in the region. But the plan was Algiers would take uh, its uh, military assets, ship them over to Libya, and then China would then replace uh, the uh, Algiers stockpile. That was the plan. And, you know, there, there might be some merit to it. There's one thing I've learned throughout the years is that war is business. All right? War is business. And that people seem far more encouraged to produce weapons as opposed to producing commodities that make the world a better place. Uh, there's more money in a stealth fighter than there is in a clean water source or an ability to create clean water from dirty water, which could be far more used in a place like Africa. But... Innovation's been perverted, my friends. Innovation has been perverted. A little bit on China's background with regard to the conflict since its inception, the UN uh, Security Council resolutions. China actually abstained from voting on the Security Council resolution in March that authorized the protection of Libyan civilians by any means necessary, with the exception of a ground evasion. China, however, did approve a Security Council resolution that banned military assistance, including the sale of weapons to Gaddafi's government. China, Algeria, and South Africa have opposed the NATO bombing campaign in Lib Libya, and the three countries were slow to recognize the authority of the National Transitional Council as Libya's legitimate authority. This all ties in to what I talked about in the video prior, and again, I'm going to link it in the below bar. It's called like the creation of three Libyas or something like that, wherein what I see, and this is just my opinion, and a great many others' opinions, but what I see going on here is that the United States, uh, m more appropriately NATO, they're trying to take advantage of a situation. Now, China has been expanding its sphere of influence in Africa for some time. And, and, and you know, make no doubt about it, this has caught the attention of the West, this uh, race to acquire natural resources. Uh, Libya presented itself as is something of a stepping stone towards a NATO, semi-NATO controlled Africa or a similar system of alliances that could be utilized in Africa. Make no doubt about it that uh, uh, when the dust settles, when Gaddafi is finally uh, disposed of, and he will be disposed of, I mean that's pro probably one of the most necessary elements required for the US to have its way or the Western world to have its way in Africa. We're in, again, they'll go in with NATO. Uh, AFRICOM will come in. Uh, it's the U.S. African Command. It's the military agency that deals specifically with African uh, issues, and they will establish a foothold so that they may combat 
the Chinese acquisitions that have been made in Africa. I think that's the end game here. It's command and control of resources once more at the expense expense of innocent people, the Libyan people, and it will go from there. I'm sure you'll see a cascade effect wherein this kind of um, event will be occurring throughout Africa. And we've already seen it in Egypt, Tunisia, now Libya. It's going to go on and on and on and on and on. And eventually it's going to come to a head between the West and China, no doubt about it. Now these papers, again, I'm not going to uh, get into whether China did this or not. Again, if it did happen, it wouldn't surprise me. And I would be a hypocrite to say, well, that's bad considering my country has done much the same. I mean, just look at the military sales to Taiwan, which, again, some consider to be a part of China. Uh, I, I, actually, I don't condone any weapons sale on any side. I don't like the sale of weapons, but I, I'm recognizing the fact that this could have happened. What I find interesting is that this paper has popped up now, you know, uh, and I think there's a different, uh, definitely a political element in all of it in that um, this is isolating the Libyans from the Chinese. They're probably looking at this saying, wow, well, the Chinese were going to sell weapons to Gaddafi, and those weapons would be used to stomp on us, or stomp us out. Uh, we can't trust the Chinese. So this is exactly w what the United States wants. This is exactly what NATO wants. This is exactly what France and Italy want, which have uh, two countries which have an incredibly uh, huge amount of interest in the oil supplies in Libya. But, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Freaking <sighs> hypocrisy. We've talked about, let's see the isolation of China from the Libyan people, the violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Again, here's another one, even though this was lifted, the whole embargo thing. Uh, when the uh, rebels took control of oil fields and they were selling the oil in a roundabout way that was being purchased by other countries, which was again, uh, once again against uh, UN Charter regulations. It just, for us to start pointing the finger at the Chinese and you know, that was wrong. It's really fucking ridiculous. But, I want to end this with an article or a statement rather coming from the Xinhua News Agency. This is kind of the Chinese perspective on it. China to continue to support Libyan's efforts on protecting sovereignty and conducting reconstruction. Chinese UN Ambassador Li Baodong said here Friday that China will continue its support to the Libyan people on their efforts to protect national sovereignty, conducting reconstruction, and promoting development. These remarks came as he addressed the UN Security Council after the 15-member body unanimously adopted a resolution to ease sanctions against Libya's assets and arms and set up a UN mission to help restore public security and initiate economic recovery in the North African country. Mind you, too, I'm sure a lot of these uh, sanction lift or lifting of these sanctions are going to favor contracts with European and American companies. Make no doubt about that. Let's follow up on that one. He said China has repeatedly stressed that four principles should be followed in handling the Libyan issue. First, bring an end, early end to the conflict. Second, launch an inclusive political process as soon as possible. Third, respect the sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of Libya, which will not happen, might I add. As well as the will and choice of the Libyan people, which will not happen, might I add once more. Fourth, give play to the leading role of the Security Council. While other countries, international mechanisms, and international conferences should also play a supplementary role under the guidance of the UN Charter and the established principles concerning the Libyan issue. Based on the above mentioned principles, China voted in favor of the newly adopted Resolution 2009, Lee said in the explanatory remarks. Uh, the new resolution decided to lift asset freeze and other measures against the Libyan National Oil Corporation, the Zuetina Oil Company, and ease sanctions against the Central Bank of Libya, the Libyan Arab Foreign Bank, the Libyan Investment Authority, and the Libyan Africa Investment Portfolio. However, the sanctions against the Libya, Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi, his family members, and close followers are maintained, the resolution said. Meanwhile, the Security Council also decided to set up a United Nations support mission in Libya for an initial period of three months to restore public order and security, promote economic recovery, and national reconciliation. The resolution was adopted hours after the UN General Assembly approved Libya's National Transitional Council as the, le as the legitimate holder of the country's UN seat. So, this is all theor theory. This is all theater. Uh, the ends, are, the, the true ends are not being spoken of. And I think China's got a good idea as to what's going on. And I think most people that are paying attention to the whole event in conflict know what's going on. 
it's just another case of Western imperialism. And if you think that Western imperialism died with the fall of the British Empire, well, you're a foolish, foolish, foolish person. But there you go. Special report concluded. That's all I got for now. Later. Peace. Zai Jian.